There is a code buried deep in the sands of Arabia, a genetic rhythm unlike any other on earth. For centuries, the Sultanate of Oman stood quietly at the edge of empires. Ships passed its shores. Armies marched across its deserts. Traders anchored in its harbors. But while the world moved through it, Oman kept something hidden. In its DNA, scientists found echoes they never expected. Not just Arab, not just African, but signatures from the Levant, the Indus, East Africa, Mesopotamia, even Central Asia. Why? Because Oman is not just a country. It is a crossroad, a corridor, a relic of migration so ancient, they predate language itself. To understand why Omani DNA is so unique, we must go back, not to the age of Islam, not to the empires of Rome or Persia, but to the first footsteps of modern humans out of Africa. They crossed the Bab el Mandab Strait, just a narrow channel between what is now Djibouti and Yemen. Some continued north into the Levant, but others followed the southern coast, into Arabia, into Oman. They didn't come in silence. They brought with them tools, beliefs, languages, and mutations, genetic footprints, traces that still live inside Omani blood today. From there, waves of history surged across the peninsula. Neolithic farmers from the north, seafarers from the Indus Valley, slaves from East Africa, merchants from Mesopotamia and Persia. But here's what makes Oman different. While much of Arabia became genetically narrow, trapped by desert, tradition, and isolation, Oman stayed open. Its coastline, curved along the Gulf of Oman, served not just as a trade route, but as a genetic highway. Yemen, its neighbor, shows signs of bottlenecking, limited haplogroups, high consanguinity, a tightening of the genetic thread. But Oman? Oman's DNA is wide, deep, ancient, and that raises a bigger question. Why does this one land preserve the memory of a thousand migrations? What is it about Omani DNA that defies the pattern of its region? The answers lie in its paternal lines in haplogroups that carry the imprint of lost empires, forgotten expansions, and movements that reshaped the world, long before the world had a name. The story of Oman is not only written in its land, it's carved into the Y chromosomes of its sons. And when we decode them, what we find is nothing short of astonishing. A single haplogroup, J1, M267, dominates the region. But in Oman, it doesn't just exist. It flourishes with ancient complexity, not the mark of a single tribe, but the echo of multiple expansions. Northern farmers, eastern traders, nomads from the Fertile Crescent, J1, M267, should have peaked in Iraq or Syria. But here it is, surging in Oman with signatures older than the cities around it. Even stranger, while its frequency is high in Yemen, the diversity there is low, narrow, predictable. In Oman, it's the opposite. Rare sublineages, divergent branches, STR variances that baffle geneticists. Oman didn't just inherit this haplogroup, it evolved it. And it didn't stop there. Alongside J1, Oman carries pieces of haplogroup E3B1A, an ancient traveler from East Africa that entered the Near East before the pharaohs ever ruled. Most Arab regions hold traces. Oman holds entire genetic chapters. Then there's a 1A1, a lineage that stormed across the Eurasian steppe and left its trail in Indo-European migrations. Somehow, fragments of it found shelter in the Omani male line. How? When? The records are silent. But the chromosomes remember. Each haplogroup tells a different story. One of movement, of collision, of survival. And together, they weave a tapestry that no single empire could create. Because Oman didn't belong to one world, it belonged to many. Its bloodlines flowed not just from Arabia, but from the Levant, the Horn of Africa, the shores of Iran, the ports of India. Oman wasn't a receiver, it was a processor. And unlike Yemen, where consanguinity and closed lineage hardened the genetic code, Oman absorbed difference, layered it, preserved it. This wasn't by accident, it was because Oman's geography never allowed for stillness. With mountains that broke isolation and ports that demanded openness, Oman's men were always moving, trading, marrying, sailing, and dying far from where they were born. The DNA proves it, but it also protects it. 
even under pressures that narrow genetic diversity, like patrilineal culture, cousin marriages, and tribal loyalties, Oman's Y-DNA refused to collapse into simplicity. It held its shape, as if the land itself was determined to remember. History usually remembers kings and conquerors, but sometimes truth survives in the quiet footsteps of animals. In Oman, that truth lives in goats. It sounds absurd, but the mitochondrial DNA of Omani livestock holds one of the clearest records of how people, cultures, and genes move through this land. Because mitochondrial DNA doesn't travel through politics, it travels through mothers. And in Oman's goats, we find maternal lineages from three separate ancient haplogroups, A, B, and G. Each one is a breadcrumb on the map of early civilization. Haplogroup A, common, widespread, dominant, found from the Balkans to Bengal. Haplogroup B, rarer, more selective, a marker tied to South Asia and ancient pastoral cultures. But then comes haplogroup G, mysterious, sparse, and found mostly in the ancient Near East. All three are found in Omani goats. What does this mean? It means Oman didn't just import animals. It inherited history. Goats arrived here not once, but through multiple waves, by land, by ship, through war caravans, through trade alliances, through forgotten nomadic routes. Their DNA mirrors the migration of people. But while human records can be erased, animals leave no lies in their lineage. And when we compare the genetics of Omani goats to those of Iran, Pakistan, India, Somalia, and Yemen, something remarkable happens. The borders vanish. Across 69 samples, Oman's goats show genetic bridges to every major ancient breeding zone in Western Asia and Northeastern Africa. No single population dominates. Instead, we see a swirling blend, like paint colors stirred in a bowl left untouched for centuries. Even more surprising is the absence of geographic clustering within Oman itself. Goats from the north share markers with those in the deep south. Mountain breeds echo the genetics of coastal herds. This isn't randomness. It's evidence of long-distance internal movement, caravans, seasonal migrations, and trade routes that connected every corner of the country. And all of it coded in the mothers. The maternal line is the memory keeper of empires. Unlike the Y chromosome, which can disappear with a single lost lineage, mitochondrial DNA endures. It survives war. It survives conquest. It survives the silence of history books. In Oman, that DNA whispers of a people constantly in motion, not because they were pushed, but because they chose to move, to sail, to trade, to connect. Even the rock engravings of ancient goat herders in Omani caves, dated to over 6,000 years ago, match the timeline of these genetic signatures. And so, without speaking a word, Omani goats carry the maternal story of a civilization that refused to be isolated. The goats knew, long before we did. Not all neighbors share the same memory. Yemen and Oman, two lands divided by a line on the map, but once joined by trade, blood, and terrain. Yet when we look beneath the skin, something strange happens. Their DNA tells two entirely different stories. In Yemen, the Y chromosome landscape has shrunk. Repetition. Redundancy. Reduced variability. In Oman, the opposite. Complexity. Divergence. Unlikely overlaps. Why? The answer doesn't lie in conquest or geography alone. It lies in choice. Across generations, Yemen favored close bonds, cousin marriages, clan loyalty, patrilineal inheritance. Practices meant to preserve heritage that ended up compressing it. Geneticists call it heterozygote deficiency. But to the eye, it's the loss of diversity, the echo of sameness. Over 44% of marriages in Yemen are between close relatives. Among first cousins, the number is even higher. The result? A bottleneck. A slow drift toward genetic uniformity. Oman, too, has consanguinity. But its genome-resisted collapse. Why? Because Oman never fully closed its doors. The Arabian Sea didn't just carry ships. It carried new bloodlines. African, Persian, Indian, Levantine. Oman's ports, Muscat, Sohar, Sur, weren't just economic hubs. They were filters through which genes flowed. Trade didn't just move goods. It moved genes. Even during periods of isolation, Oman was never still. 
Empires rose and fell, but Oman remained connected, a coastline that inhaled the world and exhaled new combinations. And so, while Yemen's genetics narrowed into a tight spiral, Oman stretched outward, forming bridges, branching backward and forward in time. And there's another layer, cultural openness. While tribal loyalty remained strong, Oman's imperial legacy encouraged absorption, not exclusion. From East African captives integrated into the population, to Indian and Persian marriages across centuries of commerce, Oman's genome became a mosaic while its neighbors built walls. What Yemen lost in diversity, Oman preserved in motion. One chose to preserve the same. The other chose to preserve the many. And today, when we compare their genetic landscapes, one reads like a single thread the other, like a tapestry. Not better, not worse, but undeniably different. In that difference lies the key to Oman's uniqueness. Not just in what it inherited, but in what it allowed itself to become. There are empires we read about. Rome. Persia, Babylon, and then there are empires hidden in the blood. Oman never ruled the known world. It didn't build pyramids. It didn't carve its stories into stone. But when we look at its DNA, another kind of legacy appears. A legacy built not by swords, but by sailors. Not by conquest, but by connection. Because Omani DNA doesn't speak in one voice. It sings in harmony. It holds markers from Africa's eastern coasts. Echoes from Mesopotamian valleys, clues from ancient Iranian highlands, and traces of South Asian migrations, long before colonial maps drew their borders. This isn't coincidence. It's contact. When the rest of Arabia turned inward, Oman turned seaward. It reached out with ships built not for war, but for trade, for spice, for stories. And every port it touched, from Zanzibar to Gujarat, left something behind. A mutation a marker, a memory. Those memories didn't vanish. They replicated. They passed from father to son, from mother to daughter, generation after generation, until the genome became a gallery, a living museum of civilizations that never made it to the textbooks. And like any museum, you don't need to visit the building. You are the exhibit. That's the empire Oman built. One without a throne. One without an army. One without boundaries but in every meaningful way, an empire of genetic architecture, spanning millennia and continents. Science is just now catching up to what the land has always known. Oman was never silent. It was always speaking, just not in language, in lineage. And the more we sequence, the louder it becomes. The empire you never studied, the empire you may carry. Maybe history doesn't live in books. Maybe it lives in cells. And maybe, Oman has been telling us a story for thousands of years. We just weren't listening, because this land didn't leave behind towering monuments or golden tombs. It left behind something far more permanent, a living genetic code that still beats in the hearts of its people. Not one story, but many, braided together like threads in a fabric too old to name. When you sequence Omani DNA, you don't just see ancestors. You see movement. You see collision. You see survival. You see the world, stitched into one bloodline. And now, that story is finding its way back to the surface. Through science. Through technology. Through every test. Every comparison. Every unexpected connection. Maybe it's in you. Maybe it's in someone watching this video right now. So I want to ask you something. Have you ever wondered where your own DNA has traveled? Have you ever thought about who walked so you could stand? Drop a comment. Tell us where your ancestors came from or where you think they did, because DNA has a way of surprising us all. And if this journey through Oman's genetic legacy moved you, inspired you, or made you question something you thought you knew, share this video. Let others rediscover the ancient voices hidden in their code. Because this isn't just a history lesson. It's a mirror, and it's finally being cleaned.